Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our regularly scheduled board meeting. Let's get started. The date, location, and time of this regular me meeting were emailed to the Independent Press, Bloomfield Life, the Star Ledger, the Township Clerk of the Township of Bloomfield, and posted on the Bloomfield School District website on January 7th, 2021. Would you all please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance? I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States, States of America. America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ms. Guo, may I have a roll call, please? Sure. Mr. Anderson. Mr. Berger. Present. Ms. Dudley. Here. Ms. Green. Mr. Heller. Present. Mr. Morse. Here. Ms. Salinas. Vice President Walker. Here. President Fishman. Here. On to number two of our agenda, moving into executive session, be it resolved the Bloomfield Board of Education will adjourn into a closed session meeting to discuss items which fall in exception of our open meetings policy and permits the board to have private discussion since it deals with specific exceptions contained in NJSA 10 colon 4 dash 12 B, specifically matters rendered confidential by federal, state, uh, or court ruling, and personnel employment matters affecting specific prospective or current employees. May I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you, Mr. Walker. A second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Dudley. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. We'll see you all in about an hour. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to our public session of our board meeting this evening. Uh, we are going to open up with number three, and we are going to turn the floor over to Mr. G. Thank you, President Fishman. This year, we thanked a lot of people in our educational community for their contributions to our students and to the community as a whole. However, tonight, I want to thank a special group of people, nine of them to be exact, for their unwavering support for the 15 months during the COVID global pandemic. That group is the Board of Education. These individuals volunteer their time to make sure that the schools are run right to oversee this excellent Bloomfield educational community that we have right here. The time, the effort, the passion, the enthusiasm, the frustrations that come along with doing this job is really seen by the public, but is seen by the administration. They are behind the curtains, but they're supportive they're professional, they're caring, they're empathetic. I am proud to work with this group of nine people who donate their time so willingly and so well to make sure that the Bloomfield Public Schools are exceptional. I thank the nine of you. In appreciation for your efforts, President Fishman, Board of Education. In recognition of superior leadership during a global pandemic 2021, we cannot thank you enough. Thank you. Vice President Ralph Walker, in recognition of superior leadership during a global pandemic, thank you. Board member Shane Berger, in recognition of superior leadership during a global pandemic. Board member Michael Heller, in recognition of superior leadership during a global pandemic.
virtual board members. Congratulations and thank you. We'll be sending your recognition on to each and every one of you. Board member Casey Dudley. Board member Benjamin Morse. Board member Jessica Salinas. Board member Daniel Anderson. And board member Nadisha Green. Thank you for everything. We love you. Thank you, Mr. G. That was uh, that was pretty amazing, actually. Uh, definitely not necessary, but very well appreciated by the nine of us. Um, some people in the public don't realize that you guys only see us in front of the camera twice a month, and you don't realize that what goes on behind the scenes are uh, a minimum of two committee meetings, county meetings, multiple times away from your family and friends, missing. Uh, certain um, important engagements that you would be with otherwise to take the commitment that we made to our town and our kids in this town and our staff members of this town to make sure that we're doing our due diligence. So thank you very much for shouting us out. Um, very much appreciated. So thank you. <laughs> totally just closed out my entire computer. Uh, here we go, number four. Uh, the, we're going to the first hearing of the public. Uh, as we've done in the past, we've done agenda, not agenda items. Uh, there'll be a maximum of 45 minutes for public comment. Each speaker is limited to three minutes. We have our call-in number, which I believe is up on Facebook. It's also on the top of the agenda. And you can also uh, put an email in to Ms. Guo in her uh, inbox. So I'm gonna ask Ms. Guo first if she has any emails, and then we'll move on to Mr. Atkinson. Ms. Guo. I do have one email, <clears throat> and it's from Maria Sanders. Um, she cited an art article on NJ.com. Um, in the article, Governor Murphy states that New Jersey won't require masks in schools in the fall, and that it will be the decision of each school district to enforce a mask requirement. Knowing that, as of now, children under the age of 12 are not eligible for the vaccine. Well, Bloomfield keep the mask mandate in place. At this point, we, the Bloomfield School District, will continue to support the recommendations of the CDC uh, and work with the New Jersey Department of Education. Uh, their recent document, the, route, uh, the Road Forward, which provide guidance to school districts to make decisions. So over the summer, we'll be making timely decisions so that we have a very successful opening uh, for this school year and we look forward to it. That was an excellent question and we do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Quo. Mr. Atkinson, no callers. Okay, if I may just real quickly before we move on uh, to the general public, uh, I know there's going to be a lot of things in the media over the next six to eight weeks as we get ready for September. Uh, as you have been so patient with us throughout this whole ordeal, we ask you for your patience one more time as we don't want to put out uh, everything six times every time somebody above us changes their mind. So we are up to date with everything that comes out from the CDC, the county, the state, uh, and every guideline possible. And we will tell you with plenty of warning uh, how and where and when and things are going to happen for September. But we do ask your patience in this process because just like when this started uh, and things were changing rapidly, the same thing is going to happen over the summer. So we will make sure that we do it in a timely manner. We do our due diligence, but we do ask your patience in that process. Seeing no other comments, I'm gonna close the first hearing of the public and move on to reports. The first one is the suspension report, colleagues, it is in your packet. And I'm on to 5B. Mr. G, the floor is yours once again. Thank you, President Fishman. I'd first like to start off with uh, a really um, blessed event that 
happened to the administration and the board, uh, and it was just coincidences and I think the universe coming together in, a, in really a beautiful way. Um, to recognize the board, we not only gave them plaques, um, we also provided a cake for the, uh, for the celebration uh, prior to the board meeting. When we went to pick up the cake, the cake had already been paid for, and it was paid for by a Bloomfield family, the Balot family. And um, the reason it was paid for, it was an act of kindness. Natasha Balot, um, to do a random act of kindness in honor of my daughter Natasha. Her birthday is June 29, 1995. She was killed in an auto accident August 2, 2015. Obviously, the tragedy of, of losing a child is something none of us could ever understand or come to grips with, but we certainly pray for this family and we support them. So we pass on, pay it forward when the opportunity comes, spend the extra time with your children, give them the extra kiss and hug, as I know you all do, uh, and love them beyond this world as, as we love all of our, our children. Blot family, we're thinking of you, we thank you, and we're passing your message forward. With that, I would like to, um, we ended the school year on a, a really high note. 15 difficult months in a global pandemic that is not completely over. But I do want to thank our, my administrative team here with me tonight our directors and principal supervisors for all the hard work that was expended over the past 15 months. The past six to eight weeks have concluded with exceptional class day activities, promotional activities, and an outstanding high school graduation. Field days and senior days and opportunities for students to get together where we didn't have much of that the entire year we were able to finish on a high note, and we're optimistic as we move into the summer months and with an opening in September that we're all looking forward to. Parents, I know this has been a tremendous struggle for you. We understand that, and we appreciate the time, the effort, the understanding that you gave us, and the patience that I asked all of you during numerous board meetings during this pandemic. And the students, pre-K to 12, you were outstanding. We asked you to perform in ways that you've never been expected to perform before, and you rose to the occasion, and it was difficult for some more than others. We're gonna regroup, we're gonna have an excellent school year in September, we're looking forward to it, and I just wanna thank everyone for an excellent close of the school year, thank you. Thank you, Mr. G. Um, Thanks seems like such a small word for such a big job that everybody has done top to bottom. Um, also like to congratulate all our retirees um, and wish you the best of luck on your future endeavors. Uh, you will be missed and we thank you for everything that you have done uh, for the students of Bloomfield. Some housekeeping items. Um, the tech department will be closed on July 5th. Uh, they will reopen um, afterwards, Monday through Thursday, 12.30 to 3.30 until August 12th. After that, you need to go to your home school library for help. Uh, while you are seeing the tech building here at the high school, you're using the State Street entrance, follow the signage. Uh, it is not the cafeteria entrance, but it is, if you're looking at the cafeteria entrance, to the right. Uh, also, our lunch program. Ms. Guo would be very upset with me if I didn't mention it. Um, it is going to be at your home school minus the couple of schools that are not having the summer program uh, until that ends. And then um, it is going to be in three three places. Uh, the high school, help Fairview. me out. Fairview. Fairview. And Watsessing. <coughs> uh, so please feel free to continue to use uh, that to your advantage. Um, and last but not least, to thank the graduates for being uh, a class act, 
uh, on the way to Foley Field during their graduation and after. Um, these seniors have been through a lot and they handled everything uh, with such class, top to bottom. Also like to congratulate Mr. Mr. Jennings for the first principal, I think in Bloomfield history, to have two proms in one month. Uh, one, for, one for the graduating class of 2020, uh, which went very well. I'm glad they had the opportunity to gather together. And one for the class of 2021. So thank you, Mr. Jennings, for making that happen along with his administration. Uh, and then closing for the school year, listen, everybody needs to take a breath. Uh, you know, put the computer screens down, go enjoy the fresh air, the mountains, the beach, wherever is your happy place. Uh, and give those electronics a, a little bit of a break. Um, do the summer school if you're uh, so inclined, but make sure that you're spending that, like Sal said, spending that time with your family, uh, something that we haven't been able to do recently. Uh, it is important. Uh, you need to take a mental break to be able to refresh, and uh, come September, we'll all be ready to go, for sure. Uh, with that being said, we're gonna move on to the approval of the minutes, number six. May I have a motion, please? Thank you, Mr. Walker. May I have a second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Dudley. Um, any discussion? Ms. Guo, may I have a roll call, please? Mr. Berger? Yes. Ms. Dudley? Yes. Mr. Heller? Yes, with special commendation for how fantastic the minutes have been this past year. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Morris? Yes. Vice President Walker. Yes. President Fishman. Yes, and before we move on, Mr. Flores, I just want you to know that means that Vicky got some more claps over here, okay? Yeah. <laughs> no. Special thanks to Kathy Cupolo has been doing the minutes for us uh, during the pandemic, so. Thank you, Kathy Cupolo, much appreciated. We're going to move on to curriculum and instruction. Mr. Berger, the floor is yours. Thank you, President Fishman. It's so important to have good minutes. I'm glad that Mr. Heller uh, recognized you for that, Ms. Quo. It's, it's a lot easier to be a board member and more transparent to the public when the meeting or have proper minutes. And another example of proper minutes, I have to say, Mr. Flores is right on point. Uh, when it comes to the agenda, nothing gets spoken about unless the, the chairperson of the committee knows. And at the end, within an hour, an hour and a half after the meeting, here come the minutes, and everything's all wrapped up and ready to go for my colleagues. So let me just give you a, a brief summation of what we no. discussed. <laughs> okay, all right, all right, all right. Sorry, Mr. Berger. <laughs> right, the attendees were myself, Mr. Morse, and Mr. Flores. We discussed uh, summer curriculum writing. We did a brief Juneteenth wrap up with another uh, hat tip to Ms. Casey Dudley. Uh, you, uh, the board members could see here that there's going to be an adjustment to the 21 22 calendar, uh, providing students and staff with a day um, off on Monday, June 20th, 2022, to observe the now federal holiday of Juneteenth. So we will have to work on how we're gonna handle it district-wide in a different way, no problem. We, um, we could bend, we could flex. We also discussed summer learning. Uh, Mr. Flores, could you discuss uh, summer learning for us, please? Sure. So we are excited that our summer school programs will be kicking off July 6th of next week. This is just one of the many proactive steps that Bloomfield Schools has taken to address the unfinished learning caused by the pandemic. The data from this past school year, coupled with information gathered from our July summer school, will lead us successfully into the 21-22 school year. Our intent as an administration as a board is that the district-wide summer programs will flow seamlessly into our much anticipated after-school learning program at all of our schools. The Bloomfield Backstop After School Program will continue to address the learning needs of our students. More information to come as we approach the anticipated October start date of this very exciting program. This time frame also allows our fabulous teachers to properly assess where our students are as we begin the new school year. Thanks, Shane. Terrific, Assistant Superintendent Flores, terrific. Okay. Thank you. We also discussed uh, kindergarten bracken screening. Those are starting up again. A couple of notes for the colleagues and maybe some the thousands of people watching at home that there's going to be some BOE meeting changes. The August 17th meeting will now be held on the 24th 
And the September 7th meeting will now be held on the 9th. Um, we'll be voting on that today. I'm sure the website will be adjusted appropriately. We have a list of EpiPen delegates, none at this time, professional conferences. Um, we did uh, have an additional item. Mr. Morse is always on the prowl for bringing up something for additional items. We discussed the possibility of a 10th grade assessment. And I will leave my colleagues with one thing here. At the graduation, the first young lady that spoke, I think she was the class president, was so eloquent. We we're so proud of her. But she said something profound. She said, they say that the 11th grade is the most important grade that we, that we have for their future. Sal, who's the they? They, she said, "They say who's the they?" Want me to, want me to say? Yeah, who's the they? The, I think the teacher. I think the teachers, the administration. Uh, having worked in a college uh, myself, I would say that that's where they're looking for your first three years, your junior year especially, for what you are doing academically. Thank you, and that was Mr. Morse's point. We should do something more in the tenth grade if they're looking at the eleventh grade. And that's what I took from that speech, and I'm sure, lifelong learners, I'm sure going to carry that all the way through. When you look at Sal's face, thank you very much. I'd like to put a motion up for 7A through 7E, please. Motion. Or second, sorry. Okay, so we got a motion from Mr. Burns, <laughs> a second from Mr. Walker. Any discussion? I'd like to thank the Curriculum Committee for always making us ponder new things and uh, keep us on our toes for what's coming ahead. So we are forward thinking. Thank you to Joe and his, his crew, his boys. Uh, may I have a roll call, please, Ms. Guo, on the curriculum and instruction package? Sure. Mr. Berger? Yes. Ms. Dudley? Yes. Yeah. Mr. Heller? Yes. Mr. Morse? Yes. Thank you. Vice President Walker? Yes. President Fishman. Yes. Okay. I'm going to turn the, fl uh, the floor over to my colleague, Mr. Walker, who will pinch hit for Ms. Salinas and Finance and Facility. Thank you, President Fishman. Um, on Wednesday, June 23rd, uh, myself, Ms. Dudley, and Ms. Guo met uh, for the Finance and Facilities Committee. Um, during our committee meeting, we reviewed active projects. I'm pleased to report that the roof replacement projects at Forest Glen and Franklin School have, have commenced um, and are underway. Um, so those projects are moving along nicely. We also have received building permits for the security camera project at uh, Bloomfield Middle School. That project will start in early July and will be completed this summer. Um, and then the Brookdale Boiler Project and the Oakview Roof Project are under design and are in the process of going through their DOE application process. Um, we also reviewed the Bloomfield Middle School HVAC and window replacement project. Um, at this point, the architect is preparing to put together a presentation to the committee at the end of July, and then we'll be reporting back to the board as a whole. Um, and we reviewed all of the open payments, um, including the contractor payments, which are included in your board packet, um, reviewed the MOU between the Board of Education and the Foley Field Foundation, and also looked at the meeting changes um, that were previously discussed by the curriculum committee and the adoption of Juneteenth into our calendar. Um, and with that, I would like to make a motion for items 8A through 8R. Second. Thank you, Mr. Berger. Any discussion? May I have a roll call, please? Mr. Berger. Yes. Ms. Dudley. Ms. Dud Ms. Sorry, my mute button is stuck. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Heller. Yes. Mr. Morse. Yes. Vice President Walker. Yes. President Fishman. Yes. We are now on to number nine, the personnel and management, and I'm going to turn the floor over to Mr. Heller. Thank you, President Fishman. Personnel Management Committee met on Thursday, June 24th. Before us tonight are 
the standard personnel actions, including resignations and retirements, to echo President Fishman's thanks to those who have served the district with distinction and have been um, stewards to our children's educational experience. We have appointments, leaves of absence, transfer, uh, transfers within the district, extra compensation, extra compensation that's federally funded, and a couple other items. During our meeting, um, uh, Mr. Dottoli was president, was present, President Fishman was present, I was present. We had a brief um, uh, joining by the transportation director, Ms. Esbach, and we reviewed um, items that may have come up during the executive. We reviewed the board notes. Mr. Dottoli always is prepared for all the questions that are presented, including um, giving us a, an understanding of why we are seeing some resignations and retirements this year. We um, also, like the Finance and Facilities Committee meeting, uh, talked about the Foley Field MOA. Mr. Dottoli always has the historical perspective and the, the depth of knowledge involved in understanding what is a complex relationship and um, seeing that project go forward. And finally, we talked about the board meeting modifications, as Mr. Um, Berger noted, and uh, the adjustment to the upcoming school year calendar. Finally, we discussed the CSA evaluation, um, which is also on the agenda tonight. And with that, I would like to move resolutions items 9A through 9J. Thank you, Mr. Heller. May I have a second, please? Second. Thank you, Mr. Walker. Discussion? May I have a roll call, please? Mr. Berger? Yes. Ms. Dudley? Yes. Mr. Heller? Yes. Mr. Morse? Yes. Vice President Walker? Yes. President Fishman? Yes. We are on to number 10, uh, policy and regulations. The only policy we have is the class size policy that was amended to change uh, one portion to read from uh, building principal to the superintendent in terms of class size policy. May I have a motion, please? Motion. Thank you, Mr. Berger. Thank you, Mr. Heller. Discussion on the class size policy. Mr. Heller, I see your hand right over there. Super. Um, there we go. Uh, thank you, President Fishman. Um, Mr. Anderson and I comprise the policy committee, and we want to thank Mr. Walker for his thoughtful engagement on what was um, a very fruitful conversation with regard to the second read of 2312. While the item that, was, that we were discussing in relation to 2312 are not directly captured in 2312, Mr. Walker's um, keen knowledge of floor, um, I'm going to mess it up, FES, uh, but basically how many people you can have in a room um, are duly noted. And I do think that it's, it's a matter that um, hopefully the Finance and Facilities Committee could bring up at a later date understand with the administration, with our business administrator, um, possibly our architect of record, and maybe it's even something that our architect of record could touch upon when they come to the meeting um, in July as they're coming to talk about the curtain wall and the window replacement at the middle school. Maybe they can also talk about FES and the impacts of FES on class size uh, regulation, not necessarily class size policy, but the actual implementation um, rules that the administration uses for the policy that we adopt tonight. Thank you, Mr. Hiller. Anyone else? Ben, did you raise your hand? Okay. Can I have a roll call, please? Mr. Berger? Yes. Ms. Dudley? Yes. Mr. Hiller? Yes. Mr. Morris? Yes. Vice President Walker. Yes. President Fishman. Yes. 
We are on to number 11, the second hearing of the public. Once again, there will be a maximum of 45 minutes for public comment. Each person is limited to three minutes. We'll ask you to state your name and address uh, for the record. First, we're going to go We're going to go backwards this time. Mr. Atkinson, do you have any callers? Ms. Guo, did you get any more emails? Okay, seeing none, we will close the second hearing of the public and go on to number 12, uh, business. We're going to start with delegate ad hoc committee reports. I got one. Okay. Yes, yeah, so President Fishman, thank you. Um, on the Essex County Ed Services Commission, and uh, they have their reorganization in the early part of June. And um, they have three leadership positions. Uh, the, the board is is comprised of 10 board members from around the county and there's three positions of leadership one is the president one is the vice president the other is this executive committee member and I was voted in as an executive committee member I just want to tell you President Fishman that Bloomfield is in the leadership again congratulations sir and thank, thank you. you for being our leadership countywide much appreciated um, just before we move on I just wanted to congratulate um, my community committee uh, comprised of Ben, Shane, and Casey who have uh, done an outstanding job um, with pulling together Juneteenth in such a short amount of time. Uh, for those of you, yeah, absolutely. So I don't know how you guys did this, and uh, it was a small miracle that you did this in such a short amount of time, and it went off without a hitch. And I know that the long list of people to thank goes beyond the three of you. Uh, we'd also like to thank uh, Dr. Evans and Bloomfield College for taking part, uh, the mayor and council for their part. Um, but Casey, man, uh, I don't know if you want to say anything, but girl friday night as the moderator and then again on saturday as the mc you you definitely knocked it out of the park so congratulations uh i know that ben and shane did a lot too but you were the, the face of it uh friday night and saturday morning and we do appreciate it so i don't know if you want to say something um just more so thank you to everyone um especially um my fellow board member shane ben you know you guys definitely uh carry me joe you know you know, the team at the high school, um, in the district, you guys jumped in feet first. It was amazing. Um, I think most importantly, though, um, although we, you know, we came together for a great um, celebration for Juneteenth, but, you know, a lot of people have a lot of things to say about Bloomfield and its ups and downs and agreements and disagreements. But I have to say, um, being a part of this event and, you know, kind of coordinating and working with so many different entities of this community, um, it, it was it was amazing um, to see everybody come together to make a success um, of Juneteenth for the first year. And as Shane did say, this was something that was in the works six months prior to us even knowing that it's going to be a national holiday. Um, so, you know, hats off to not just us, but everyone that was a part, a huge part of this within our community. Um, and, you know, I, I also would just like to say, I don't know if you guys paid attention, but, you know, Bloomfield was forefronting the news circular, circular the entire weekend um, of Juneteenth. So that was great to see um, us kind of setting the face of the entire weekend for the state of New Jersey. I mean, I've seen a lot of um, different celebrations that were um, being discussed or talked about, but not like they were discussing the event here in Bloomfield. So that was great to see. Um, and I hope that we can continue to go on the same path and um, you know make a good example um, but I'm, I'm, I'm really, ex I'm really happy and also excited that it's over. It was a lot of work. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. Fair enough. But she did have a nice spot on uh, Channel 12, Channel 12 News. We'd like to thank them for coming out as well. Uh, once again, Bloomfield re leading 
the group in the state, uh, not not just saying we're going to do something, but with the help of uh, these three individuals, making sure that it happened, and it happened uh, to the utmost. Um, so thank you to them, thank you to everybody who took part, um, and I, I can't wait to see what you bring to at the table next time. And President Oops. Fishman. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> look at her face. If yeah. we can also thank WBMA TV um, for true. their coverage, they were great. Um, including following us as we walked down the street behind the um, Bloomfield College marching band. That's true. Uh, Jay, Jay and your co I don't forget. Say again. What did you say? Are we able to get access to the footage of Saturday? I don't know if it's fully edited yet. It's Jay said he stood out there long enough in the sun that he didn't have to be the one to edit it, so it's being worked on. And as soon as it's edited, he'll help us out. Jay, I don't know, I, forgive me, I don't know the gentleman you were working with, but the two of you did top-notch job. It was like 90 plus degrees, and the sun was right in your face. So, uh, as always, you know, we won't tell everybody else. To, Jay's our favorite cameraman. Don't tell anybody else. Yes. Um, any other uh, new bill? Uh, yes, sir. I would like to comment about Mr. Morris. Now, everyone who knows Mr. Morris, you will see Mr. Morris, and he will be twirling his beard sometimes. And every time he's twirling his beard, look, he, he is bounce. thinking about diversity, equity, and inclusion. <laughs> now he put you on blast, Ben. Watch out. <laughs> Any other new business, old business, or information items before we depart? Okay, it's time for everybody's favorite time of the meeting. It's called adjournment. Can I have a motion, motion. please? Thank you, Mr. Heller, a second. Thank you, Mr. Walker, all in favor. Aye. Have a great night, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. We'll see you in July. <laughs>